How's it going everybody? This is Echo Papa and today we're talking about mapping external VST effects. Now there's lots of effects that Virtual DJ will take other than its own effects. For example this one right here, Camel Crusher. Uh, but you have the problem of how do you map all these controls because as you can see over here Camel Crusher has only got two knobs just like everything else. But if you click the the plus and minus button you can get this window to come up showing you all the other knobs. So are you destined to use the mouse to control all these knobs and, and can't use all these controls from your external controller? Nope, that's not true at all. You can control all of those knobs from your external controller. The downside is it just takes a little bit of trial and error. So let's go ahead and show you how it works. Now I'm going to, uh, right now I, I have my, um, uh, uh, my Newark DJ to go plugged in and um, here on one of my, my wheels I have in the uh, command called effect slider. Now effect slider one uh, would be uh, is the command to control this knob right here and effect slider two would be this one right here. Now just because you only see two knob and keep in mind when they're saying slider they you know they mean knob slider it's, it's the same thing to virtual DJ. Um, when uh, even though you only see two, there's actually lots more that it can control. It's just the skin is only showing two. So you can control all these other ones. Basically, you just have to change the name. So instead of, like, it's, let's say we want to control this one over here, if we were to take this and change it to effect slider, let's say, five. Now, when we turn this knob, you can see the cutoff in the filter right over here. Uh, I can now control it, even though it's not on here. Now the next thing that, that you might ask is, uh, right here is a button. How would you control the button? Would it be effect button? No, it still affects slider because Virtual DJ doesn't know that this is the button because it's not one of its own effects. So uh, what it is, you just have to uh, treat it like it's a slider, but you can still map it to a button and I'll show you how. First let's show you how this works. I'm going to take this and we'll change this to, to one. And uh, you can watch this over here too uh, as I um, twist the knob. You can see down here as soon as I start to twist this it changes from uh, the command that it thinks it should be to an actual value. In this case it's zero. And as you can see as it goes all the way down as, we, as I turn it slowly when I get all the way down to the bottom this is going to turn off. And there it is. It's now turned off. So if I take this all the way back to the top you see it's starting to turn and it's turned back on. So basically and when I go to the top here you'll see the value turns to 1. And basically it's moving from a value of 0% to 100%. So how do you map that being that it's a slider? Uh, and well you can do it and you can map it to a button itself and you just have to um, uh, let's just have to do a little bit of coding but it's not hard. I got it, I got it already coded right here. Now if, right here it says effect underscore slider now one basically we're saying that's the first slider because uh, this this button is slider number one so the effect slider number one is at zero percent question mark so we're asking the question is that thing at one percent so we're asking is it turned off now if the answer is yes then we're saying well uh, effect slider number one one hundred percent if it's not at zero will then make it zero. So basically we just with this little line of code we just built a toggle. If it's turned off then turn it on. But if it's not turned off well then turn it off. So uh, so you can here I'll show it to you right here again effect slider and that is uh, number one and you can do this for any of it like for example if you wanted to do uh, this one over here this one is one, two three four four. We want to turn that one on and off we'll just change these to four Okay, and now we should be able to control that button. And yep, we're able to turn that off now. So because we're just telling it to basically go all the way to the top, zero or one hundred percent, all the way to the bottom, zero percent. Now, uh, so which equals which? You know, which one is slider number one? Which one's number two, three, etc.? Well, unfortunately, that's up to you. Uh, you'll have to go through them one at a time. Um, here, I'll show you what it is. If you guys have Camel Crusher, I'll show you uh, which ones they are. There it is right there. And as you can see, it kind of goes in order, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 
10, and then it uh, jumps over here to 11, and then comes back for 12, probably because uh, the master volume is kind of like a, an important function, so they put it last would be my guess, but I don't know that for a fact. So how do you find it on your external VSTFX? Well, it's just trial and error. Uh, what I did to, to find this one is I basically went here to my uh, effects slider, and I mapped it to one of uh, my knobs, and I just started playing with it. First I went with number one, and number one, I took it all the way to the bottom, oh, and it turned that one off, controls the first button. Then I changed it to number two. So it's just uh, so it's just a matter of going through them all, effect slider one, two, three, four, all the way down the line until you know what all your controls do. So anyway, that is mapping the controls on an external VST. If you guys want to get a hold of me, you can find me on Twitter at DJ Echo Papa. If you like this video, please click the like button. If you really liked it, share it with your friends or everybody else subscribe. Until next time, I am Echo Papa, and I will talk to you later.